All right, <clears throat> let's read Ephesians uh, 6, uh, starting in verse 10. Hey, those are pretty good. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might always. It'll always be God's might. It's like what I told you this morning. Uh, you couldn't no more cut off your right hand if you didn't have a good reason for it, but you couldn't no more cut off your right hand than anything. And, um, boy, I got all kinds of goodies now. Yeah, that look very good. That's all right. Thank you. Is that your pocket lint or somebody else's? <laughs> Awfully sticky there, John. Anyway, um, you couldn't do the things necessary that need to be done. God has to do it for you. It's like Paul with his thorn. When God refused to take his thorn away, he gave him grace. And he said, grace is going to be sufficient for you. So Paul then realized that everything that he was doing, he was doing in God's power and not his own strength. Because when it boils down to it, it's just like the Catholic Church right now. They worship Paul. They pray to Paul. They built a giant cathedral to St. Paul in the Vatican. There's a, a St. Paul's Catholic Church everywhere. Anyway, people worship Paul. And God says, that's not, -uh, that's, we're not going to do that. You're going to worship me because you're going to know it's my power and not yours. Anybody tries to tell you that they're, they're mighty in God, they're lying through their teeth. God is mighty in them, maybe, but not the other way around. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And <clears throat> here it is. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I pray, dear God, that you would bless this message tonight. And pray, Father, Lord, that you would clear my throat. And help me, to Father, to speak your word uh, with the power that uh, comes with it. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that uh, what I say would be in line with your word. And Lord, that our understanding of the things, Father, that we cannot see uh, in the devil's kingdom, Lord God, that you would give us uh, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, especially in the days that we're living in right now. Father, we know that our, our battles are real and they're very serious. They're more serious than what goes on in any kingdom or in any nation's politics. We're talking about your kingdom versus the devil's kingdom. And we're talking about the fight over men's souls. So, Father, I pray, dear God, that you would give us light and understanding tonight. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. <clears throat> um, I'm going to put this up on the screen. Uh, these are the, the four divisions uh, that they come in. And we're going to see from the Bible, these are not earthly principalities or earthly powers. And I'm going to explain that, uh, the difference as we move along. Uh, and I mentioned that because, uh, as you know, I've, I've been buying some uh, replicas of older English Bibles. The Tyndale Bible, which I love. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. And it's a facsimile. I have a copy of the, of the, um, t the uh, Wycliffe Bible, which is very difficult to read. I mean, it's written, I mean, it's, it's letters like we're used to seeing, but the words are, some of them are, are not recognizable. Okay. The English spoken by John Wycliffe and the English people of that time had a slightly different English than what we have, even different than King James English. But anyway... And then I have uh, the Geneva Bible, which was translated uh, in the mid to late 1500s. And it was translated by 
a group of uh, Calvinist Puritan scholars, and um, it was full of side notes so that they, the Bible, that you would read the scriptures and read what God said, and then you read the notes that were in the columns, and that told you how God means it, and it was their interpretation. And one of the things that the Puritan Calvinist scholars did not like was they didn't like kings. They didn't like monarchs, because, and, and probably for good reason. In most of the countries where Calvinism uh, really took off, like in the northern Scandinavian countries, Denmark, have you ever noticed that countries like Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, they all have a cross in their flag? That's because at one time they were Christian nations, and they were mostly Calvinist churches, and very strict, very strict, okay? And now these same countries are the, some of the most liberal countries that are in Europe. But anyway, um, one of the things that, one of my biggest problems is one particular verse uh, in the book of Ephesians where they literally added a whole phrase to this list of things that we wrestle against. So they said principalities and powers and then they inserted a, a, third, a third one in there between two and three. And it said, I wish I had it with me, but it said something like, uh, against earthly rulers or something like that. But it clearly denoted that they believed that their fight was against monarchs, kings or queens. And like I said, in a lot of these nations that had kings and queens, the kings or queens were ruled by the papacy, and the papacy told these kings, uh, if you don't want to burn in hell forever, you better get rid of all of these Calvinist churches out of your nation and get rid of those Puritans. You better drive them all out and have them killed, or we will, uh, we will banish you from the church and you'll burn in hell forever. That's what, the, that's what the popes were telling these kings. And these kings felt obligated to do it. So automatically, if you're a Puritan, you don't think much of kings because they keep running you out and keep killing your family. Uh, but to add that to the scriptures, that's no-no. You don't add, you don't do that. Their whole Bible, and there are some people who've got it in their mind so much that King James was some evil Masonic occultish king that put all these occult symbols in the King James Bible. We read the Geneva Bible. That's messed up. It really is. Uh, so when you add to the Word of God, it ceases, in my opinion, to be the Word of God. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, we're going to look at that part of it, that aspect of principalities, so we can establish what it is that we're dealing with. If we were to say that these principalities and powers are earthly rulers, we would, we would in our age have to include mayors, county executives, police chiefs, um, state governors, judges, lawmakers, the President of the United States, that was an easy one. Um, but we would, have to, we would have to be literally at odds with anybody that tried to rule over us. If we believed um, that principalities and powers were something other than spirit beings. Okay? So what I did was, uh, and I, I don't think I've ever done this study, was I took just the word principality or principalities and looked at how the Bible used that, especially in the New Testament. In Romans 8, 37, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, now pay attention here to the neighborhood that this is in. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, see where he puts it? Puts it in with angels. Angels, principalities, powers. So we're not dealing with human powers or earthly powers. Earthly powers 
change over time. Okay? Angels remain, bad angels stay bad angels, good angels stay good angels. Okay? So we're dealing with uh, higher beings. Nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So taking that then, principalities means angels. It means that no devil has the power to separate you from God's love. The devil cannot make you do anything. No devil has ever made a born again Christian do anything that they didn't already want to do. The devil didn't even make Eve eat of that fruit. He never brought it up to her other than to get her to question what God said. Okay? Then, Ephesians 1. And I found several places in Ephesians that I, I guess I just didn't think of it at the time. Ephesians 1.20 which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. Notice this, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And he puts that in the area of heavenly places. So heavenly places, far above all principality and power. So Christ is in charge of every spirit every spirit Christ is in charge of them there is no spirit that ever except for Satan himself that ever really wanted to take on Jesus one-on-one -on -one. not even the legion uh, that was in that man when they said legion for we are many not even as many as there was what was it 12,000 Something like that. Not even that many devils wanted to take on Jesus by themselves. They didn't want to do it. They, they asked, please don't put us in the pit right now. Don't do it. So he cast them into the hogs, the swine. So no devil has more power than Jesus. Let me throw something else in that I know that people like Oral Roberts... Uh, Benedictus Hen. Does anybody know who that is? Benny Hen. His real name is Benedictus. He was born a Roman Catholic in Lebanon. Went to Catholic school, trained by Jesuit priests. And he shows up with Paula White having an affair, but they're both going to the Vatican to have meetings. What does that tell you? Okay, means he's not on our side. Amen? Amen. I'm going to chew this up now. <clears throat> but anyway, um, they will tell you that God does have the power to cast out all kinds of devils from you. God has the power to release things unto you. But technically, he can't. He can't unless you release him to do it. You, they say that you are the one that is holding God back from doing great wonders in your life. So that when someone, um, and I used to have a lady that followed our ministry. And her name was Deborah. And she was a southern girl, real sweet, real sweet voice. She would call and I'd talk to her and, and she would, she had some kind of lung disease and she knew she was going to die. And at one time she asked me if I'd preach her, her funeral. I told her I would, but her husband never informed me when she died. And, and I just stopped, I haven't heard from her in years. So I'm assuming she died. But anyway, Deborah would say that when she would get in with her, Bible study friend, girlfriends, that some of them were telling her, you know, you've actually got the power to deliver this sickness from your body. You just have to release your faith. You have to release God to do it. And you don't have enough. Your problem is the reason why you still have it is you, you don't have enough faith to release God so that he can work this miracle in your life. Now, there is not a verse in the Bible that tells you that, that doesn't 
The Bible does not say that. They say that's what, how God works. And, it's, and so what, what they're doing, it's a, it's a cover your backside doctrine. Because when it doesn't work, and it won't work, when it doesn't work, it can't come back on you, the preacher, because you told them God wants, God wants to do this miracle. Everybody deserves a miracle. God wants everybody healed. God wants everybody free from sickness. When this doesn't work for you and you're about nearly dead and you ask the preacher why it's not working, he will say, you didn't have enough faith. Obviously, you just didn't have enough faith to release God to work in your life. That's what they'll say. So now it's not their fault. It's your fault. You didn't believe God enough. And the proof of that was you went to see doctors. Doctors are faith killing machines in their eyes. All doctors, all medicines. Why didn't Oral Roberts then build a hospital? I never figured that one out. He built a 300 foot tall hospital. The city of Tulsa said, we don't need it. Don't build it. Oh, God told me to. And he raised the money, built this hospital. And then after a while, they shut the hospital down and was selling the rooms for like uh, commercial properties. People would rent office buildings. And yeah, it was a joke is what it was. But anyway, that's what they tell you. Okay. But excuse me. Christ is at the right hand of the Father, far above all principality and power. That means that no devil has more power than Jesus Christ. None of them do. Uh, and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head of over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 3, 9. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Got to be careful of these new translations. They will write in there, who created uh, everything through Jesus Christ. That is Gnostic doctrine. That's what Jehovah's Witness believe. That God did not create everything by Jesus Christ. He created them through him. In other words, like Jesus was this, uh, what, they, what Gnostics believe is that Jesus is a lesser God of 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 a lesser God who finally can have contact with the material world. So that Jesus is far below, far enough below God to create everything that's in the world. But far enough above the world so that he is, he is over it. That's what they believe. But that's not, again, that's not what the Bible says. Especially New Testament. Jesus stands at the right hand of the Father. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Amen. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And lots more before Abraham was, I am, Jack. Amen? Jack's not in there. Jack's the new King James Version of me. Um, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now under principalities and powers where? In heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Isn't that something? Uh, in fact, let me look there. I think that's the place where uh, Paul said that God hid it from them. Uh, no, that's not the place. Anyway, we know that uh, Paul later on says that God hid who Jesus was from these devils. Because if they would have known that in killing Christ, that would have ended their power over man. They would have never killed him. They would have never done it. I mean, if, if Hitler could have seen the future, 
He would have never done some of the things. You would think he would have never done some, some of the stupid things that he ended up doing. And he basically, he self-destructed his own empire because of his arrogance, because of his ignorance, because of the fact that uh, he, had just, he had just lived through a bomb attempt on his life <clears throat> and he had a bunch of people executed. And he quit trusting anybody in his military. And so basically, even his best generals were telling him, you know, mein Fuhrer, we can't do this. We can't make it this way. And he would say, "Ah, uh -uh, get out of here. And he'd plan it and lost everything. Anyway, I don't know why I got off on that. But anyway, uh, clearly here in this passage, these principalities and powers are in heavenly places which means that they are the ones, if there is an earthly power, then there is a, a spirit power over them. This is easy. Do you believe that there are spirits that are at work in the Democratic Party in this country? Listen, the Republicans had their had their convention. How many buildings were burnt down in, where'd they have it? Wisconsin? Minnesota? Huh? Wisconsin? How many, how many buildings were looted? How many, how many, uh, how many uh, riots were there? None. And they're already on the news talking about, the Democratic convention is this week, they're already talking about the riots that have already started. It's in Chicago. What do you expect? What's going to happen this week? They're going to burn that town to the ground. Okay? The, listen, that's all satanic stuff. Chaos is the realm of Satan. It is. It, it, he, it, his kingdom is a kingdom without any order. Right? Okay? So I promise you, there will be riots. Buildings are going to be burnt down. People are going to be killed. You name it. Because, listen, how, how, many, how many innocent baby deaths does Nancy Pelosi have on her hands? What about Kamala Harris? You know, they're talking about this election basically being made up of the California Four. Pelosi, Gavin Newsom, um, huh? Adam Schiff, Shifty Schiff, and uh, Kamala Harris. That basically for the next four years, if they win, the country's going to be run by what's in California. Mm -mm. It won't be this country. Mm -mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just watched a guy talk about how Pelosi basically just stabbed Biden in the back. She comes out and says he's the most, he's the most brilliant president we've ever had. We need to literally put him on Mount Rushmore. And she was serious. But behind the scenes, I guarantee you, she, she and Obama were the two people that stabbed him in the back and told him, back out. Because they were losing money. Money wasn't pouring into the Democratic coffers because of Biden. Everybody figured, nah, there's no way he's not going to win. I'm not going to waste my money. And Pelosi and, and Obama, probably the Clintons, got together and basically committed murder political murder on him and said, you're out, period. There's no discussing it. Sure he did. No doubt. Anyway, these heavenly powers and heavenly principalities are the ones in charge. So let's, let's say that there is a principality over Festus, Missouri and Crystal City. Well, I could take you to places where they're probably there. You, you went to a place. The other day, delivering that food. I mean, you ought, to, you ought to see those symbols just all over the door. And he took a picture of it. 
And uh, absolutely, whoever's in, yeah, it is. Whoever's in that, whoever's in that apartment is into magic, witchcraft, um, astrology for sure, uh, and alchemy. So there's a lot of, al now that I think about it, there's a lot of alchemy symbols in that too, okay? But anyway, um, Colossians 1, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. And all four, all, it's always in fours, by the way. It's always, I haven't pointed that out, but just about every one of these has been groups of fours. This one is the same way. Heaven and earth, visible and invisible, that's four. And then four more, thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers. And these thrones, these are angels. Dominions, these are angels. Principalities, these are angels. Powers, these are angels. These are all, uh, these are all spirits uh, that rule over territories and areas of this world. Um, I believe it's possible that they also rule in other heavenly places like the moon, Mars, places like that. Um, I, don't, I don't have that prepared for tonight, but it's a belief that I have. Um, that they're not just limited to this earth. That they are in heavenly places, just like the Bible says they are. Okay, So you think about that for a while. And there's a face on Mars. Okay, There is a face on Mars. Oh, yeah, you had to look that up, okay? And there's, there's things that have been, now that Nikon has made a camera for everybody that has a telescoping lens to where literally you can see stuff on the moon, literally. Uh, what is it, a P1000? Nikon P1000, I think. Uh, you can get amazing results taking pictures on the moon and there are videos of stuff flying out of the moon back and forth and I'm like okay but I, I think that they exist in more than just one area okay uh, Colossians 2:10, and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ Buried with him in baptism, wherein ye also are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And then in verse 14, he gets down to it. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he's referring to the law. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Okay? So, I'm going to ask a, a touchy question, okay? Don't be mad at me until you hear me out. It's a little touchy, okay? Did Jesus have long hair? No, oh, that's true, we do it. I think he did. More than that. More than that. He was the Nazarite. In, in every Old Testament office or type, there are a picture of Christ somehow, some way. Uh, Aaron the high priest, Christ the high priest. Um, Elijah the prophet, Jesus the prophet. Okay? Um, the Nazarite vow meant that you did not touch any dead things, did not partake of any wine or grapes or raisins. We know that at the Last Supper, Jesus did not partake. Um, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll tell you, there's a couple reasons why. The verse, let me see if I can pull this up. I'm going to give you something to think about. There's, and there are some people that disagree with me, and they've explained their disagreement, and, and I honor their disagreement. I think, they have a, I think they have a point. But I'm going to 
I'm going to tell you why I, I think that he did. Um, okay, Matthew 2.23. He came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, there is no Old Testament verse that says he shall be called a Nazarene. There is a verse that says that he will be called a Nazarite. Uh, I believe it's probably Samson. Yeah, right. Judges 13, 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear son, no reason, and for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God. And then in verse 7, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, of, uh, to, the, from the womb to the day of his death. I think that that, uh, yeah, it's verse 7, that should be called a Nazarite. Um, Judges 16, I have been a Nazarite unto God. Samson, we know Samson failed in his Nazarite vow. Any place that somebody fails in the Old Testament, Jesus perfects it in the New Testament. Okay? So, I'll tell you why I think Jesus had long hair. Because it fulfills that verse that we just saw. That he spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly. Okay? Revelation 9. And what comes out of the pit? They have the faces of men and the hair of women. Okay? And in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it. Um, I think Jesus made a show of them openly on the cross. Okay? Now, that's just, that's just a, that's something that I've had in my mind for years. It, to me, it makes sense. Again, you're not going to find a verse in the Old Testament that says he shall be called a Nazarene. But you sure see it the other way. He should be called a Nazarite. Nazareth and Nazarite, they are the same root. If you look them up in Strong's Concordance, you're going to find their, their neighbors, meaning that they have the same meaning. Probably, I don't think Nazar, I don't think Nazar means separation. That's what uh, Ferez, Ferez means breach and separation. But Nazar, the, the Hebrew word Nazar, I think has something like, it has something to do with separation because that's what you're doing. You're, you're separating yourself from everybody else. Plus, what does the Bible say about men and long hair? It's a shame, not a sin. And I had a guy tell me, well, the Bible says it's a sin for, Jesus, for men to have long hair. No, it doesn't. You read, you read it wrong. It's a shame. And what did Christ bear to the cross? Our shame. Was he clothed on the cross? Nope. They stripped him. Why? Because he bore our shame. That should have been us stripped up there exposed to everybody but christ didn't allow that to happen to us he had it put on himself you ought to tell god thank you every day you live tell god thank you for not exposing who you really are to the world so that's that's sort of why i have this idea that jesus was showing their demise in revelation Nine with the fifth fifth trumpet. Five is for death, remember? Okay? Uh, and he spoiled them when he was on the cross. Uh, let me put that back up there on the screen again. Yeah. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Okay? Triumphing over them in it. I mean, why did he say, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must Son of Man be lifted up? Jesus is not a serpent. No, 
but the serpent is, has the power of death in its mouth, right? And Jesus took that on himself. Satan, literally, he defeated Satan and his power over death when he died on the cross. And how did, how did Samson, the Nazarite, die? Let me die with the Philistines. And th think about it. Think about something. How many people were on the roof of that temple when Samson pulled the, the pillars down? 3,000. A third of the angels. The ceiling of that temple is heaven. Those 3,000 up there are the angels. And when Samson destroyed those principalities and powers in heavenly places by bringing down those pillars and killed all of them. Amen! I like that stuff. It's like color pictures in 3D. Okay? Um, but that's what Samson did. He, he, the Bible says he killed more of his enemies in his death than he did in his life. So Samson and Jesus are like the heroes of the war film that you watched where the guy sacrifices himself and kills all the enemies so his buddies can go free. I like movies like that. I do, I do. I like movies like that. I like it when the, when the good guy wins but maybe has to sacrifice in the end. I, that's, to me, that's Christ, you know. Anyway, um, very quickly, I'll finish this out. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates. Now, see, here we have a different type of principality and power, don't we? Now we're being told to obey them. We're not told to wrestle against them. We're told to obey and be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates and to be ready to every good work. In Romans 13, which is the chapter that I get in the most trouble over by anarchist so-called Christians. Who think we, do, we need to bring down this new world order government we got here. And, set, and I'm going, what kind of government would you set up? I think I'd be afraid of that. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So he's not telling us to wrestle against earthly powers. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Who wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? For he is the, uh, do that which is good and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So, I think it's clear the Bible's telling us to obey earthly powers in as much as they do not attempt to force us to break something that is clearly God's law. Clearly God's law. Um, and I, I just, there's, I just believe there's some Christians that just like being rebels and I just don't go for that. Uh, I love my country. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be born and live in another place and I know it's getting pretty dark and getting pretty evil out there But still if a cop comes up behind me with his lights on I better pull over I better pull over and uh, I think God will lead us in Situations where he'll make it clear to us what he wants us to do. I do uh, If you're looking for God to direct your life, he'll show you he'll show you who to obey who to resist. Amen. Let's stand to our feet.